Hello, everybody. How are you all? Happy New Year. So, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. A bit of a tricky one, this. Been trying to think about things that we could possibly do. We've got a few of you say, could we do a guided tour around each room? We'd love to. But I'm just looking at all the cables and everything set opposite me. Then Craig sat here with a computer desk and everything else. It's not that easy, but a few issues over the time where people said, God, I love your work boxes behind you, display stuff. And it kind of dawned on us, you've never really seen maybe what we've done in here. Um, with the hand tool room, when we came back into here and we moved things about, I was given this bit of paper. I think Craig gave me this bit of paper and said, I want you to make something a bit like this to go on the wall to put your hand planes and stuff in. Okay. We're also going to need something that, from my point of view, I kind of looked at, could we have something a bit more portable so we can take it to a bench? So that could be a benefit. You know, I've got, we're still going to do some kind of courses, definitely stuff, training stuff. So I want to be able to take some of the tools so they can use them on the bench. So that related to what we had to do in the rooms a bit. Um, in here, the whole of the room on this wall, and it's a bit longer than you can actually see, purely hand tools. One of the things we looked at, could we have a, what's classed a French cleat system? So we made it out of plywood. The first thing we actually did in the room here totally was board the wall behind us with plywood. Fix that on, so that's fixed nicely. We then cut some birch ply. I don't know, Craig, if we can go overhead, I think we can probably see. So we've got our plywood. We cut it into rectangular strips and then cut it in half, 45 degree angle. The beautiful thing with this is one bit goes on the wall, the other bit onto whatever you want to hang. They interlock. So it's fantastic. We're back to the main one, Craig. Everything drops in, locates. It means actually anything behind me, we can move about. So I can alter my design of the display for what we want as a backdrop. We can move things about depending on what we're using, maybe promote stuff. So where we've done Christmas stuff, we moved it about. Fantastic. Now, even from my own workshop, then I started thinking, and being, Christmas had been fantastic to do, to get out there and move a few things about. Um, my tool storage beforehand for my hand plans and my chisels, I made a desk unit, if you like, that went into... My workbench, got lots of drawers. And it's a fight to get stuff in and out. That's a real simple way of phrasing it. I've got stuff on top of one another. Every time I open the drawer, the chisels move or whatever. So actually becomes frustrating. And I started to also have the other thing that I've sharpened a chisel and it bangs into the one that's next to it. It doesn't actually do it any good. So doing what we did in here was fantastic as a wake-up call for me of, can I move things about? I wanted to just I try and get the drawer out from underneath here and put this all in the drawer. But this is the kind of scenario I've seen people with where they have a box and they have all their tools and they're just kind of thrown in this box. So your hand plane, yeah, it might wrap in a bit of cloth, some chisels. Hasn't really protect anything. So if you want to protect that investment, you've spent time sharpening it. You want to keep it nicely sharpened, clean, protected and ready to go. And that's the fundamental fit. And the other nice thing with this is find it. Be able to get it off the shelf, use it, put it back and know exactly where it is. Or even from the point of view in here, know it's missing. So that occasionally happens. So our box on here is not really desirable. So where did we start with this? I think the first thing I made when we came back in is our little chisel box. All right, so I can see the top and the front. Now, how do you go about designing something to make as a holder? First of all, think about what you want to put in it. So in this case, there were six chisels was the primary thing. We've got box sets or basic sets of six chisels. Wanted to put the six chisels into this. I also use a lot of mortars chisels. As we said, I wanted it so it had a carry handle. So chisels are on the front. But the whole of this box based around your bracket that clips on the wall. This was great to do with the new dovetail jig, so the UKJ dovetail jig. Craig did the demo last year in the video when we released it. I got to play a bit, a little bit, test it. So the dovetail jig down through the one nice joint in that corner. That makes it incredibly strong. Our grain direction is running up. On the side here and through to the front, we did a slide dovetail. Comes all the way across this board. So this rail, I can slide down through. I glued it in place. A little spot of glue. Didn't want too much. So on here, you can see there's a movement bit where the wood shrunk just a little bit. Trying to allow that to happen, not restrict it. This little block, kind of thought we've got to have some strength to have a handle, somewhere to put the cleat system on the back. Got a tray. So what can we do here? Okay, we'll put a mortise chisel holder. 
inside here, you probably can't see it. You can see the black at the bottom. There's a piece of foam. So that actually protects anything I put in there. And obviously on the back, we've got our cleat system. We have the handle. Makes it beautiful to pick it up and take to the bench. So really enjoy this. Just give us a second try. Just going to do this bit. So all six chisels. Now the narrow ones I put nearer the edge because then I haven't got to do a cutout for where they slot in. Makes it more protected. The wider chisels, as you can see, on there, got that cutout. Just come down from there. I can drop into that and drop it in. And that gave me a way of carrying them about. Just going to turn around. Just going to reach down to the chair here because I've got my two mortise chisels that I use. They can drop in the top. A couple of other things I have in here. Nice big wide chisel. Keep that one down in there so that foam protects that. My dusting brush and my favourite cabinet scraper. Hidden out the way so people can't use it. But that gave me something that was really nice and portable. Um, I know when we first did those, a few of the guys came in and went, oh, wow. And I went, no, I am not making those to sell or to take down the shops. Come on, Craig, what have you got? Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. We've got a quick question. How thick was the material? Uh, the, 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 the French cleats. For this? The French cleats. Sorry, for the... The material for the French cleats. Oh, for the French cleats. Ah. So you're on about this bit. Right, I've got to do a couple of things. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I can be, I think, now we use birch ply. Um, we're a real fan in here of birch ply. The only thing we don't like about it, it's getting expensive, all right? But incredibly strong, good thickness. So this is actually 15 mil, all right? So we use 15 mil ply. The strips here have got a 45 degree angle. So at the top, and this bit's not so critical, I've got about 41, 42 mil. All we did do when we did those would make them all the same. So it didn't matter where they go. So we ripped it down into rectangles to make it easier and then ripped them down in half to do the 45. You put them through twice if you need to on your table saw. So a great way of doing it. And like I say, it was lovely to hang everything up. Made it quite quite adaptable. Um, Craig, where we've done the UJK room here, about we did the back wall of there. Because again, we can move things about. I love this whole aspect that we've got something. Okay. Now, just going back to get a few people. So we kind of had a quick run from the design thing of that. Uh, what did I do? First of all, I laid out my six chisels. Where do I want those? And I, the best way you can do something like this is draw it up full size. Bit of MDF, bit of plywood. Draw it up as an idea of what you want, where your holes are going to be. The spacings, the handles, possibly even the ferrule size will play a part in this because they might vary. The bigger chisels I put near the middle have a bigger handle, but the ferrule size is the same. The reason I put those near the centre, they're less likely to get knocked out because they're secured in the centre, not right on the edge. It also meant my timber is less likely to get broken on that last hole. If I've got a cutout coming through the front, it makes it very weak here. So all those little things start to think about where things are going to go. But quite usable as a box that you can take around. Lovely even put on the wall. We then kind of got asked can I do something and this has got more chisels in but on the back of this I wanted something that I've got my marking gauges so let's start putting things away again that shouldn't be in that plastic box so I lift that up under the rail so there's a couple of dowel rails on the top of this one just going to tilt this back let's see what Craig's got yeah we've got another question um what did you use to finish the plywood we use an oil finish in here Okay, so on the ply on the wall, we just put an oil finish on the actual ply. We wanted that two-tone effect we've kept on here. We usually even used an oil stain on the plywood as the backing material, the darker. So we gave it that two-tone effect. We wanted something that had a bit of a colour change. The birch ply is a nice way of just oiling up. It's quick, simple, low odourless. It will protect it a bit, stop it getting dirty. Even the boxes that I've made were oiled. Um, someone's going to say, what kind of oil? I think on these we used a Libron standard wood oil, all right? Just purely that. Something nice and thin, put it on, wipe off the excess. But it gave us something just to protect them, bring the colour out a little bit. So the other chisel box on here, we've got all our marking gauges, dovetail gauges, saddle squares, everything else down through. 
Again, that's that plywood lip that clips on the wall. So that's just the back of the box. We turn it round. We've got our chisels. A few other things to go back in here. So I have more there. If I can reach over. And this was all about knowing, first of all, I suppose, where things are. Square. Made it easy to take to the bench, be able to use it. My marking knife dropped in down behind the square. So I know where this is. I can easily get it out. And that's one of my favourite things in here, that little marking knife. Shadow square in the front. So things that I use quite regularly got to put in there. And I love the whole aspect that you've got something that double-sided, move about. I'm going to see if we can. And Craig's just pointing. Let's see if we can go a little bit up here. So we've got our chisels. Got to be careful. Got to take a few things out of the bit. Marking knife. Square, linear, shadow square, set of chisels. And as we kind of said, the other side, let's just have a look. I don't think the chisel, uh, chisel to hold in there. Got our slots. Everything drops in. Now, I've had certain people go, yeah, but this takes up more space than putting it in my drawer. Yeah, but you don't tend to use your wall space nicely. So let's just drop that one back out of the way. Clip it on. I can move it about. The other thing, as we've already said, I can take it to the bench. Fantastic move things. Now, the other nice thing of all of that, it protects stuff. Keeping things apart, everything had a dedicated space, you know where it is. And I've, that's a real dream for me in here compared to stuff at home. Whereas, crawl around the floor, opening the drawer on my workbench, trying to find the hand plane blade or my square or my cabinet scraper, or oh, where's the burnisher gone? Just becomes frustrating. In here, my burnisher with my cabinet scrapers. Physically in behind them, I know exactly where it is. I just got to get a key to get in here in the evenings, I think, but I don't know if that's going to happen. All right. Now, hem planes were a real different thing. And they wanted to kind of, you know, when, when they came in and Craig had to talk for me, one of the guys upstairs came down with bits of paper, wants something to display the hem planes in. Now, we do three ranges of hem planes. So, we want three different boxes. Okay. They need to go on the wall. Right. I want to put the hand planes as, if you like, manufacturers per box. I want you to know how much weight is in all these hand planes. So it's quite a lot of weight to put in. So I don't know how much we've really seen of these in the past. So on this one, we've got, and this is my favourite one. The reason I've got this one off the wall, the colour looks better to probably show you the shape and the detail. So Craig's just on the side. I'm just going to creep around the edge here. So with this, we've got this lovely shape, very gothic-y looking shape, very Victorian. It's almost church pew. I love that shape, this curve, come up through. So how do you start with something like this? Originally with this, everything starts as a rectangular, two sides, so I glued them up as side material. But again, start with that aspect of draw it up on a bit of plywood. Don't go just thinking you're going to make this straight off. You need to draw it up on plywood, get your sizes and everything else right. Even down to the aspect of your lamps you might want for the section up there. We're going to go through a little bit what they do. We've got two shelves in here. So all those things become quite a part of it. So I just pop back around the side. Let's go back to camera two a minute, Craig. So we've got our side, but at the bottom we have a dovetail joint. Again, done with the dovetail jig. I cut it down just enough to fit it in so this was left square. Coming down to the bottom to the dovetail joint. Bring it round where the shelf is here and here. They have a set location, which we'll explain in a minute. There's a slide dovetail jig that comes all the way to the back, down through. So those shelves slide in, it stops them twisting or moving, but allows them to move across the width as the grain expands and contracts. On the front, it's got plywood backing. Actually, the plywood backing is a triangle piece we'll show in a minute. We've made up a complete box. That's about giving the whole of this strength for when we hang it on the wall. Separators in between. So you can put your plane back in a set location. You don't bang things together. Rubber and on here. So this is some rubber matting. So it keeps the planes, stops them slipping at the bottom. So that's where it's down here. This stops the blade hitting the plywood. Likewise, on where the shelves are, there's plywood strips or rubber strips down on here. Again, just really to protect it. The plywood you can see goes all the way down through. Around the back quickly. Plywood back. Two strips to hang this on the wall. So two French cleats to make sure there's a lot of strength on this. There's a lot of weight involved in this, so it's quite important. The plywood goes all the way to the bottom. All the way up through to here. On this side, if you took the back out, 
there's a plywood triangle that fits in from here, comes up. So we made that as a box. So the front here is screwed through the front onto that triangle section. The back bit's pit sort of uh, then glued on and fitted together. So it's built around that box. One thing I wish I'd done is a hole in here. We could have had a storage area inside using the bottom of the shelf. But you kind of think about these things after, and then I kind of think, what am I going to store in there? I don't know. So did it matter? I actually love that shape. But there is that kind of thing. That I think a big hollow area in here. I could have used that. So back round to our front bit. Hoping. Let's just move a few things. I'm going to drop it down. And I think, Craig, we might be able to. I don't know how much it's going to show on the camera. Just to see. We've got our dovetail. Now, the dovetails are working in the best way they can there. So that's all about adding strength. We've got our shelves. And you can see they have curved shape. So when I started making this, and I think we're back to run then, Craig. So big, this thing. I had rectangular as a box, as we said, as a side. Do all the working out there. Draw it all up. Don't go cutting your side shapes out almost to the last thing that I did with these, was cut the sides out. It's easier to work on something square rectangular sides when i wanted to do the slide dovetails we couldn't use the dovetail jig so i clamped the two boards down the bench guide clamp clamp it across fix it in place run your router on the side or well, there's even the guide brush adapter which helps it even better you can slide it through so there are ways of adapting stuff quite quickly but it's easier to do with it being square so those side bits, really important to get over the fact that you don't go cutting your shapes out. The other thing that I had problems trying to think about was the sections to put your planes in. We want to stand them up. I went, sorry. I'm thinking you're going to have to put them flat. I uh, don't no, want to stand it up. You've got to go in. It's got to stay there. So that was a case of a little bit of trial and error. of How much angle can we get away with? The rubber really does help stop things slipping away. So that's kind of interesting, the fact that everything will hold there nicely. Then what have you got as materials to go in there or planes to go in there is a better way to phrase it. What might you want to buy? Work out the longest. So if you have a number seven you want to put in, or maybe even a number eight. This actually, the Lionel someone has an eight. This is a seven. Let's have a quick look, see where that comes up to. So quite high, supports it, displays it nicely, allows me to get it on and off the wall, but also makes it accessible quick and easily. So I love that whole aspect that we can quickly move things about, but keep things nice and safe. Other things I had to look at, was trying to think of accessibility, which is more my point of view of walking behind the workbench, because I wanted to have, all right, Craig on my way, just gonna go for these, these curves. Now I didn't actually want to have a curve, why add a curve? Because square corners are sharp when you walk into them, they hurt. So by adding a curb, we cut down that distance, if you like, front to back. But also meant that as planes got longer, so in reality we have a number four. Now I'm just going to show you the best way of doing this. We'll sit out there. Something as it gets longer can go towards the middle. Other thing is we might have to go in here, which is why there's the lower shelf, which I think you can just about see if I tilt it. Little block planes would all sit down low underneath. So I was trying to think of locations for everything. One of the things I did nearly come a cropper on, how much difference they can be for blade height. Top of them, number four, compared to the Rider or the Veritas, the Lion Nielsen's are a little bit higher. So just fits in. Didn't allow a lot of room on there, but just enough. Okay, so they fit in there beautifully. Craig? Yeah, just a quick question. Are there any designs, any plans for these? There's not. It's one of those things. I knew we were going to get his questions. We could draw up. My best answer, though, really is, what do you want to put in this? Do you have the same range of planes? Do you need it as wide? So start with a piece of plywood, draw something up. Look at your heights, you need, do your designs. Craig, you'll bounce for when we started doing this. I drew these all out on plywood. And I had a few guys, and it, I, can, I probably spent a day drawing up the designs for this, working out, playing around with different ideas. Each of the boxes that are on the wall, you can just see, this one, it's different shape. There's another one right down here. 
different shape again. So I've got three different shapes we did with these. The shaping really, you can, once you've got your positions of your lower shelf, your bottom for something like your block planes, upper shelf, fours upwards, longer shelf has my longer plane, six, sevens, whatever, then my shoulder planes on this one went on the top. I worked out all those areas, then started to build around all of the shape. I'd also say the shape on this one, I love. Even down to the materials on this, and this was some very scrappy lurch that we bought in from a job lot. Lots of material, and by scrappy, it had been badly cut. I think it had been done with a chainsaw mill. It's warped, twisted, everything you can imagine. But great color and effect for this. So don't go thinking you can't make them in softwood. Craig? Yeah, Maria's asked, are there any consideration for covers to cover up the planes? She knows we've got really good extraction generally in our workshops, but have you paid any thought to, to covering or protecting your tools? My best answer to that, and I'm just going to go get it. So I'm just wandering along, getting something right in the corner here. Think about how you can protect stuff. Air and moisture causes the problem of rust. So camellia oil, you've seen me use lots in here to wipe the planes over, the chisels, all those sort of things I regularly use, even in the room in here. The room in here, as much as it is inside a building, I don't have any heating. That's why they told me I have to work with a hand plane to generate a little bit of heat and get things going. You've seen me do it over the year. So we're not doing that today. All right. But so camellia oil will help protect things and stop it going rusty. If you had really damp workshop, you could actually make something as a cover that goes over and it doesn't have to be wooden. It could be a cotton cloth type cover. You can get material cloths. Something to try and restrict the airflow would be good. There is things like the hand tool wax. We covered that when we did the hand tool maintenance session. That will work nicely as well. Stop those things getting in it. Okay. The other thing, obviously, I've got in here just while we're still on there, even the rubber matting allows an airflow off the bottom because the plane's not sat in contact with wood. The oiling of the wood surface will help as well because it will stop the air moisture being absorbed into the wood particles, so the plywood or the strips, which again can cause things to go rusty. So if you oil the material, you're sealing that wood up, so you're stopping the moisture getting to there. Craig. Cliff has asked, what angle did you get on the top bit for the plane? On this bit? I don't know. And I knew that was going to come up as a question. I will have a look and we will measure, okay? Um, there's even possibly, if you wait just a sec, let me go get, I know where it is. I have the tractor on my desk because we were measuring some chisel angles the other day. So I know exactly where it was. One here now, a little bit fiddly, but I've got to try and see. I wonder if I can come that way. It'll be difficult to get into there. A bit too thick for that. I think I've got about 20 degrees. Okay, so I'm just trying to sight that over the top. If we can. We haven't got to it yet. Well, difficulties actually on the back of here where we have that plywood bit for there. But gives you the idea of live videos, doesn't it? A bit more up, I'm trying to sight through, check my line. I need to get a nice digital one soon. A bit more. Too much, Dyson. Looks a bit haphazard doing this way, but as long as I can get my line, that's good there. Okay, so on the top here, I've got 25 degrees. There's an angle coming off the back edge, coming down as a slug. All right, so if you take this straight, down through, 25 degrees gives me an angle that I can hang off of on that top corner. So hopefully that answers that as a, a quick and sort of simple inquiry. Um, is one of those weird things. Like I said, rubber matting can be really good. You can get rubber matting quite easily. Oh, even things like bicycle tube. Cut it, just strip, lay it, bond it in place if you need to. These we just laid down. Quite simple to do. The strips on the top here held everything in place. The beauty of this, like I said, is the fact I know where everything is. Everything has a home. Doesn't get damaged. Doesn't get knocked about. We've obviously done other boards, so let's just quickly do sliding bevel kind of looking for it goes there 
Now, my sliding bevel fits into there, sits nicely on my marking board. Hand plane one we've done. Simple things like spoke shapes. Again, you can make up simple bracket. So no, Craig, let's just see if we can go on there. Doesn't have to be too decorative, but this didn't take too long. This was a case of drilling some holes, cutting them, allow things to drop in. Turn it over, just got to hold them to make sure they don't fall out too much. We've just got our cleats on the back, a little bit on the bottom, the bigger on the top. Why two on this? Just make sure it hung square nicely on the wall. Also, the fact if it gets knocked, it's less likely to fall off. But haven't had that with too many issues with any of this. We found actually the cleat system keeps everything nicely supported. It just gave me a real simple way of hanging those up. Again, I know where they are. Everything on this screwed together. So quite simple to do. All right. Now, I'm going to do something else. We had an inquiry just before I came onto this. That'd be a good time to do it. So, how would if you're watching? I wanted to wait until we got halfway through this to make sure you got. So, you had inquiry about block plane. So, let's have a look on camera three, Craig. Let's have a look at the overhead. Old style Veritas low angle block plane. Okay, they've done this for quite a few years. It has three little dots in the side. Now, it's something I never knew about. Let's move that one over so you can see it. So, new stuff, they just changed the design and why. Um, I think it's to bring it more update with what we've got on the bench. Also, it makes it a bit more ergonomic and user friendly because actually, when you grip this, the only dot you actually put your finger in is that big one. The other two are actually almost aesthetical, they don't do anything. But if I'm going to grip it, I'm there on the other side, that finger there. I can feel the edge of it, it does give me something I can grip. One of the other planes they've started doing about five, six years ago, so the DX has a much longer elliptical oval shape. You see it in there? So your thumb will actually lay down that groove nicely. So it's more ergonomic to hold. And also the fact, depending on your hand size, will determine where your thumb goes. So you can clearly get into that elliptical oval shape. On the older style one, you had smaller hands, your thumb or your thumb and finger wouldn't reach it. So you've got to have quite, well, so the oval shape is obviously something they've looked at and kind of gone more user-friendly, more ergonomic, okay? So hopefully that answers why the fact that they have changed that shape, which is good. All right, okay. So we are hand plane boxes, something that hangs on the wall. Now I'm gonna do a little thing. I've got to move this. Um, I know when we first did these, Absolutely petrified on how heavy these were going to be. So whatever you put on the wall up on here, make sure you fix it nicely. So with these, we actually glued on from memory the plywood buttons. We nailed under. You could screw it if you need to. If you've got buttons on your shed wall that you've already there, fix it onto those. Fantastic. If you've got wooden shed with four by two bearers, great. Use those as your hanging point. Screw into those. Be really good. Definitely got to have two French crates it's going to hang and it's got a lot of weight. Right. Yeah, just a quick question on the French cleats again. Um, Maria's asking, are they cut at 45 degrees? They are cut to 45 degrees, Maria. And both pieces are cut from the same piece of material, so they're both the same thickness. Aren't when they? we first started looking at it, and if you think about what you're doing, if you're doing this on a table saw, and that's the easiest way to cut them. We first looked at, if you're doing a table saw, you want to do a 45, then I want to do, cut it off your sheet again. Got to do a 90. 45. Hmm. So actually, it's much easier to cut them down as a rectangular block. So to give you a rough idea, where did we put the rulers? We should know by now. They should be in there. So that means they're still in here. Okay, let's put one away. My marking and measuring board that I hang up. Out that plastic box. So I think I cut these... Get away with about 75 mil wide strips as a rectangle. Okay, so you rip them all off at 75. If you have something like a Festool or a guide rail saw, don't use the word Festool, you could be DeWalt, Bosch, whatever is a guide rail saw, you can clamp that on, you could rip it down that way. If you're going to use your table saw, try and break the sheet down a bit beforehand into smaller bits because it will make it easier to manage. Not so heavy to lift onto the table saw. So I've got about 75 mil. Having cut it to 75 as a rectangle, 
Then set the blade to 45, you rip it in half, and you're trying to find your dead center. So you get two bits the same. If you're slightly off center, you can rip it through. The one that's come off, there's nothing to stop you put it back through, but you ideally want them all to be the same size. When we fix them on the wall, well done, Craig, we used to space a button in between. So we started at, where did we start? Can you remember top or bottom? We started at the top, which we had to work around the electrical box down the far end. So we started at the top, pin one on, put your space button in between, do the next one, work along, and gradually came down the wall. All right? So these go all the way right down to the floor. Not that we're going to hang much down there, but you never know. It looks good, all right? Um, they did take a little bit of work. And I know when we first suggested, and Craig kind of suggested, so I want to do something like this. And I was, it's a lot of bloody work. Oh, my God. Fantastic in here. All right. I love the fact we can move stuff about. So, Craig, you got a question? Yeah, just really just capping off on what you said. I mean, I think we ended up with about 45 mil strips with about 80 mil spacing in between. And it gives the wall such versatility. Um, quick question. If you've not got a table saw, Yep. Bandsaw? Could you be neat to feed slowly? Make sure your guides are nice and low, as close as you can get it to that board, so you're keeping your accuracy and doing that bit. You could even possibly go hand skill saw, electric one, 45 degree tilt, your fence foot on the side, or maybe if you really want, come out. But you could get away with your bandsaw. Nice sharp blade. Um, and people are going to say, and this is something that probably shot Craig. I mean, I've got a bimetal blade and my bandsaw at home and fantastic for quite a lot of things. So what is it bimetal now, Craig? Or we have the uh, premium blade. Yeah, they're bimetal. All right, so yeah. our premium blade, super, really good, definitely for the plywood. Super tough. All right, so that would be good for that. It'll keep it nice and straight. So shape-wise and everything on your plane book, before I throw it up on the wall in a second, which is where I, where I was heading with it, draw it up. Put it on a bit of plywood first to so your sides. All right, so I've got my side bit, so I worked out the shelf, of a shelf. Don't worry about all this, yeah? Work out your heights you need for your block plane, your number fours, fives, what longer stuff you want. So you can put all that, get it worked out. Spacing, width-wise, was the next thing. What planes do I want where? So again, on a bit of plywood. Number eight, six, five, low angle, scrub plane. What can I get up in here if I do that as shorter? So you work out those bits. It's worth spending a bit of time doing. And the easiest way, draw it up full size. So you almost lay the plane in, strip in between. Right? So these, I think, are 10 mil. And these were the ripping out bits we had over. So 10 mil spacer, just screwed in. Quite easy to do. But it's worth spending that time to draw it up. Weird and wonderful things, like I said. The curve thing really helped because it made it more accessible so you don't walk into it and bang your elbow or whatever on it. Also, it allows the fact that you've got a longer plane that'll go near the centre, shorter plane near the outside edge. Fantastic for storing everything in. Right, now, oh, got my free holes. Better do the holes. Some, no one's asked about the holes. I love this thing. Very gothic-looking arts and crafts. So what was that done? Drill bit. Forced a bit. Okay, so let's have a quick look around on there. Okay, on there. Oh, my God. Let's see if I can get onto there, Craig. I see where you're heading now. Craig wants me to go to number three there on here. Oh, wow. That looks nice, doesn't it? So to do this is so simple. Forced a bit, drill three holes to the overlap. You will probably need pillar drill or drill guide to get nice and straight. After I've done that, chamfer out a bit just to take that front edge off. And it looks so good when it's up on the wall. Um... And like I said, very arts and crafts or gothic -y looking sort of church pew thing. Um, I have had a few people ask when we're doing a sermon on a Sunday morning, can they come in? Now we said about hanging it up. Okay, right. So you can see Edie hang on the wall. It's kind of why we wanted to go through it today because it's beautiful. So she then starts sort of showing you that things and details you haven't seen possibly on it. Well, that fit, it does go in there. All right, so just put a few planks back in there. So I block plane in underneath. Now, something you probably wouldn't do for home, and this is a bit more elaborate. There goes the ruler. This was a challenge, I think, really. But we have quite a good collection of Japanese saws. 
Um, I wanted to do something Japanese orientated. Occasionally, hopefully soon, we might get to go and do a show somewhere. I might bring these with us. So we wanted something as a Japanese sword stand. So we've got very Japanese style sort of arch. I can't remember, I've got a Google picture that comes up as a screensaver. It's exactly that with two, all right, and a lake. So the lake's down here, and I kind of, okay, could we use that as an idea? So the saws all hanging, quite fiddly to do. We had to do all the curves. And then on the opposite side, probably, ooh, let's, have a, let's see if I can go to there, Craig, let's see. Yeah, good. So I've got a drill hole, a cut, which is where the draw bit was, and then cut down to allow the saw blade to go in. Other side, oh, we've got a rack. That allows the handles. So quite an elaborate thing. The other thing that was quite good for these, wanted to make it so all three stand on the bench. So sits up, looks quite nice, but we can take it to a show, put it on a bench, we can have the saws in it. So as much as it will hang on the wall, it's also got that other use of taking it out on site. Crike. Yeah, Bill's asked, with the three holes and the chamfer bit routing, did you get much tear out with the grain direction? Nice and slowly as you go round. Okay. Don't do it in one heavy cut. That's the other stupid thing we all do. That, that'd be like me saying, I'll give you a wood chisel, off you go, do it in one heavy go. So we're able to cut it to do that a little bit. And you've got bearing guided cutter, so you're running off the substrate. Go round it. Lower it down a couple of mil. Do the next one. You spent all the time making it. It's amazing that we all get caught up in that. Got a new power tool. I can quickly just bang this out and get it done. So actually, you spent hours making a box. Go around it two or three times to get that overall effect. Doesn't take you long. Less cleaning up as well. So no, no real problems with the breakout. Only thing you've got to watch it as you come around. You're not flying off that edge and then coming back in. So again, Control is about the major thing with that. And less cut will put you more in control for that. So gradually you go down. Remember, the deeper you go down, the wider the chamfer is getting, the more cut it's taking, the more it want to pull the router a little bit. So try and control that. All right. Right. Just going to throw the saws back up in here. So they will drop in. They're also done so they went inside us. So hopefully, can they drop in? But it's quite a nice way. And I wouldn't say I'd want this at home for my workshop. But it was really definitely done as something maybe to show them off nicely, definitely in here. But everything, again, has a location. We've got, I don't know if I want to show you the back. I didn't finish the back quite as well. Look. So our French cleat, a couple of little bits, they're screwed onto the main uprights to give it, again, they're adding more strength. So the screw that's in here goes into this bit. At the top can't quite see it on the camera that's why i'm trying to explain it there you go a little dot all joins into this so pulls it together the top bits were also screwed on you can't quite see it's just covered it over so a couple of screws in these so simple to do the effect on here uh, i'm trying to think of what project craig you did something where we did the burning with the blowtorch and then the color and the wire brush exactly the same technique just to add that little bit of contrast so again let's move that one out of the way Got to come up a little bit better. I think the last couple of things we're just going to quickly look at. Okay, quite just been and got this big board. Look, so we did our color thing where we did this. Look, so then it's using exactly the same technique. Okay, so let's have a quick look on there so you can see the texture and everything else. It looks fantastic for this. So, this is using in reality quite cheap pine. Got to make sure you've got that hard sort of figure with it. You burn it. Good blow torch outside. We're not allowed to do that in here. Wire brush it with the grain. The more you burn it, the more you can relieve the fibers. And then a spirit stain. But you've got all of those different colors. Fantastic to do. From memory, that's just a natural. Okay. All right. So just a wax on there. But you kind of see that. All right. So we did exactly the same on the top board for the saw thing. All right. For the stand, we made that red. Next little one I'm going to look at. And we're not going to do money more. But give me the scope of what you can do. Cabinet scrapers. I can never find my cabinet scraper at home. Okay. Becomes frustrating. I want to be able to use them, get them out quickly. So some way of hanging them up, really easy to do. So this was done using a bandsaw. I know if I tilt over, some of them are going to fall out. We just did a series of cuts. So we set the fence up to an angle that you can use for your bandsaw. 
So tilt it, draw a line on the back, cut down to that line. We did the shape on the top, backing board in behind. <laughs> there you go. So you get hangers on that French cleat. So everything again is using that system of the same bits you cut off. So when you're doing this, if you've done, there's just that in there. So when you're cutting your French cleat material, and Maria kind of asked what sort of width, what size is, obviously try and do as long a length as you can. There's more strength in adding one long length to the wall than lots of short bits. The short little bits you might cut off keep because they make all the bits for your hangers. So likewise in here, these actually have been living up in the corner, there, right in the top rail, because occasionally we get one of my canoe thing. Can we? So I've got a few spares, so don't go throwing it away dramatically, all right? But so easy to do. Um, hope it's given you a few ideas of what quite simply possible and move things about as well. Some of you might have your workshops where you go for periods of using different things. The other thing, like I said, I love the fact I know where things are. So I want to use a Rhino number six. Oh, it's on here. Go get it. Rhino some planes. And they're all on. Okay. So everything's there. It's got its location. It's safer easier it looks after your tool foot stops you breaking things hopefully things don't become as cluttered and they get damaged in the drawer box and everything else so all those things add up for a positive yes from me it's got to okay so you can imagine my christmas is being spent doing some of this moving stuff about trying to tidy my workshop up get things laid out better quite a nice way to do things great you've got any more questions anything you want to know hope you've enjoyed it Hope I haven't ranted and gone on too much about it. it. gives you an idea of something that we haven't shown you. Of simple storage boxes, maybe for your wall. How decorative you can make something quite simply. We will see you next week. More with Working Wisdom. Bye.